Okay, now just to give an idea, the KTM with a 170 mm uh, uh, suspension travel, okay, if you've ridden the bikes, and I'm sure you have, they are stiff. They are yes. stiff as uh, a person with bike after some time. And you try to figure out where is that 170 mm going? Where is it gone? It's like kind of non existent. Uh, so welcome back to my channel. This is part two of our review regarding the Suzuki V Storm 250. So we have Sherman on the line. Always fun to be with your channel. I can say shit and nobody there to scrutinize me. Perfect. So <laughs> Sherman, uh, you know what? Actually, our first video we've spoken only about the positives, and we've got quite a few comments from our fellow viewers mentioning we did not mention the main thing called as the suspension travel, which I think is a very important point to discuss. So I think let's talk about the negatives of this bike, including, according to me, it would be the suspension travel to begin with. Now, if you understand the EDV market, you have everything from the KTM 250 390s that have a suspension travel of 170 millimeter and goes all the way high to 200 millimeters. That is the suspension travel of the Himalayan and the Yazdi Adventure. And suspension travel is a very important aspect when you go off-roading because you need the travel to absorb the bumps. So, what is your view on this? Uh, frankly, yes, suspension does play a big role. Uh, in how, uh, I mean, you know, when it comes to ADVs and off-road and suspension and comfort. But I also feel it is equally important how a brand tunes the suspension. Now, for example, the KTM. How much is, how much is 180? 170. 170, 170 okay. millimeter. Okay. Now, just to give an idea, the KTM with the 170 mm uh, uh, suspension travel, okay, if you've ridden the bikes, and I'm sure you have, they are stiff. They are stiff yes. as uh, a person with bike after some time. And you try to figure out where is that 170 mm going? Where is it gone? It's like kind of non-existent. Not exactly. saying the bikes are bad. The bikes are pretty good. They can take a lot of beating. But then it is on the stiffer side, which ADVs usually are not supposed to be, or any bike is supposed to go off-road. At the same time, uh, let's take a commuter bike. I was just, uh, we were just joking about this before we before the call. And uh, so Bajaj Platina. Has a 135 mm suspension travel, suspension, yeah, suspension travel. travel, which is hard, which is probably 15 mm, 1.5 centimeters more than the V Strong, and still has a 200 mm ground clearance and one of the most comfortable commuters that can be sold in India. So and you got to look at how a brand turns, uh, puts down the suspension and how they tune it and how they've managed the whole working system of it. Exactly. Platinum has a 200 mm ground clearance considering they have 17 inch wheels. Right, they exactly. have 17, right? So, 17, yeah. Yeah, if they had 19 inch wheel setup, I'm assuming 200 would easily go to 205 millimeters as well. There are so many ADVs that we don't even know that the Doodwalas are using, but actually they are pretty capable machines. I mean, if, if, if you've seen the Top Gear Africa special, one of the hosts was using a TVS biker to cross African forest. If a platinum can give you 200 mm ground clearance with um, um, ample of suspension travel, in spite of being only 135 mm suspension travel, and it's one of the most comfortable commuters you could buy. I mean, if you go to any part of rural India, you see the way people bhag out those platinas on those fields and jungles and forests and uh, wherever you say. Yeah. Like, I remember going to Morbe and a platinum guy just passed us by, like, a friend exactly. with, with milk boxes, with milk uh, cans and whatnot. And we were on our ADVs and uh, sports bikes. I like, oh my god, yeah, this road, yo. Yeah. Oh. So that is what. It's how a brand basically tunes the suspension up. And I find it very, very ridiculing that everyone's just bashing up the V Storm for its suspension travel. Ride Corona, 205 mm ka ground ki diya hai na. See how they have tuned it. Obviously, if they have given such a ground clearance, the bike will move. Like the scrambler, you've ridden it, right? It's a tall bike, but it's stiff. It's what stiff. Exactly. Exactly. The SD scramble, I did not like the suspension uh, setup at all. So, yeah, I mean, see, I'll tell you what, rightfully, people should get upset with reference to the, what do you call, uh, uh, travel. But uh, let's let's uh, uh, understand how efficiently it has been engineered yes. because you cannot have a SD scrambler suspension with, with long travel, but it still feels stiff or a KTM suspension with long travel, it still feels stiff. Theoretically exactly. and practically, there is a difference. 
So let's give Suzuki the benefit of doubt over here that the suspension has been tuned as per ADV standards because obviously V-Storm is an amazing brand to be, is an amazing sub-brand of Suzuki to be associated with, right? So if they're using the V-Storm batch on the product, I'm assuming they must have done their research inside out. So this is our view regarding the front suspension, the rear suspension. They have not mentioned what is the specification. But the respective, only after the test drive, we'll understand. So that is number one. Uh, number two, what I disliked about this particular bike is they have not put in any efforts to change the exhaust. See, now, even they if did, you they did, they did put in little effort. I mean, they actually just painted the exhaust with a yellow. <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm not a Benelli fan at all, but even the Benelli 202, the 502, I'm sorry, they've put in effort, the 502X, as an exhaust besides the, you know, passenger seat so that the water, um, water weighting capacity is much exactly, better. Exactly, is much better. And then you have the 502, which is a road bias. So I'm assuming it's, it's a V-storm for God's sake. At least the exhaust should, yeah. they, they that, should have changed the exhaust. That, that part I would very much agree with reviewers, with influencers, with everyone uh, talking about the one negative that I personally dislike is yes, they should have changed the exhaust or given it a little bit higher because this exhaust is, like even the KTM, the exhaust is not adventure high, but high enough to, you know, to go through places. Well, as this exhaust is tuned exactly, is, I mean, the placement is exactly for a street naked or a sports bike. And they have not done any changes to it, which is a big disappointment. Because even, let's say, even a place like Bombay, which has water, like a lot of flooding, and you you have had one of the worst experiences, if I'm mistaken. Yes. So, so, you know, in that kind of situation, this exhaust is not acceptable. I mean, forget ADV. Apne road pe halat ho exactly. Exactly. It is not acceptable. So I think this is something, I mean, obviously there will always be red roosters available in the market where, uh, you know, certain changes can be made eventually, but this but should have yeah, been done from the company. be very side. careful with the new uh, mm-hmm. exhaust norms coming out and cops, you know, getting very strict with the noise. Yeah, that, that's that another known issue. To be uh, loud, like very loud, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not that everyone, uh, checks for the decibels and whatever, so. It's, it's, it's usually the guys on Enfields that get caught, unfortunately. But, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> for you, fortunate. I mean, I still <laughs> like that brand to a large extent. Uh, <laughs> point number three that I did not like, or it's, it's not, I did not like, it's just, the brand, the product comes in that particular price bracket, which we appreciated to like 11,000 is not a bad deal. But the problem is the market is so saturated with competitive products that come at two like 11,000 rupees that it's kind of feel confusing. Now keep your hatred for Royal Enfield aside. The Scram 411 comes at the same rate. Okay, now obviously I personally know people who have had a really good experience with Royal Enfield. You have had a horrible experience with Royal Enfield. You and quite a few other people. But let's consider that experience aside. Product to product, the scram kind of makes more sense with reference to number one. It is more road biased, like the V Storm. Um, it's it's got just five millimeter ground clearance slats. But it's got a 190mm suspension travel in the front and 180 in the rear. And, I mean, the Royal Enfields are like, say, a sofa on two wheels. It kind of looks new. And if, if you don't mind, uh, and at the same rate, forget about the uh, Royal Enfield in terms of reliability, you have the USB Adventure as well at the same exact price. So I think the only thing that differentiates the V-Storm uh, with reference to value is the fact that it's a Japanese product, it will last forever, and it will have a slightly better, uh, you know, a petrol sipping habit as opposed to these larger capacity bikes, especially as compared to the ESP. So, as I may sound a little biased, but as uh, one of our friends uh, always says, uh, it's a jab, bro, it's a jab. So <laughs> yes. that, that yes. for me at least mentally plays a big role for it. And I have, as a person, always liked Suzuki and the products. Yes, their service is a whole different thing to talk about. Uh, but, uh, yeah, their products are pretty good. I mean, if they really step up their game with, when it comes to service and parts and whatever, you know, availability mm-hmm. and stuff. So, 
I mean, this can be a game changer. And like you said, there are other products at this price point. And keeping my issue with Royal Enfield aside, yes, uh, not denying that they have improved over the years compared to what I had and the new products coming out, fit and finish and quality is not up to the mark, but still far better than what it was back then. Far and better. The, and the new products are pretty nice, no denying the fact. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's simple that at that price point, the uh, they still have to keep live up to when it comes to reliability. I am not doubting the comfort. I'm not doubting the design or the build. I'm purely uh, for me, it, for Royal Enfield. What is still skeptical is always been quality. Uh, I loved my Classic 500, and it was one of the most comfortable bikes I could ride. But yes, back again, quality and reliability. Uh, yeah. Same way that the Scram, uh, it seems to be a super product. Not ridden it. I rode the Himalayan. Uh, one of my friends had got the Himalayan and I wrote it. Uh, he, he does reviews. So, uh, uh, and uh, it was nice. It felt nice. But then, you know, I looked at it and, you know, certain parts felt like it could just fall off. But, like, you know, the comfort, the handling, uh, the mm-hmm. suspension, we, I jumped over certain speed breakers. It was magnificent. Yes. But then again, yes. I, I don't know, six months or a week down the line, maybe six months down the line, but the parts will still be there on the bike or something will be rusting, or something will be falling off or something will be shutting down. <laughs> so exactly. If, if, if they can get rid of those issues, I think it should be, they, they should, I mean, competition is still high. Scam seems quite promising. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a lot of friends using Suzuki's right from the time of Suzuki Samurai to, uh, I remember there was this, uh, the, uh, GSX 160, which is one of the first, uh, 150, 160 cc bikes to give you a six speed gearbox. This is yes. back in 2011. 155 cc, six speed gearbox. And that, and I remember people still have their bike till today and they're running it like a daily workhorse. Not like, you no, know, not like some of the NPV people say, oh, we are in NPV, but how much has he written? It's like grandfather's bike given, passed down, but not hardly done any kilometers. But this kind of bikes have done kilometers over and over, like speedo has run out and they still continue doing kilometers. The bike is still there. Hmm. You're right. I mean, see, the I'm sure the Himalayan will reach Suzuki level. Maybe in BS20 or something, by the time the BS20 norms come. But uh, till then, um, uh, if you're looking at reliability and if you don't want to fool yourself by saying your bike is like a woman, it needs to be taken care of and actually use the bike as a machine that it is built, then I think the V-Storm makes sense over the Himalayan. And unfortunately, even though I'm an absolute Yesley fan, I've I've seen that it is still in its initial stage of, you know, being a perfect bike so yeah if you if you want an absolutely reliable bike you start after three months or so without any issues then i think the v-storm makes sense but uh theoretically those come bikes make more sense but practically it may be a completely different matter let's just tell people though even for us as a matter of fact before we make any decision or conclude anything let the bike come out let us all ride it even you guys who want to try, try and test it or think of buying it or buying any other product uh let the vehicle come out ride it because it's simple it's you, you don't you don't know how the check is if you don't go on a date with us so it's as simple as that exactly perfect and just be aware of little uh, uh pending service issues that uh suzuki would have <laughs> i mean me personally speaking yeah. uh, i own a bergman the people are very courteous once the bergman enters the service center it is sorted but the problem is service center is perpetually always full and uh, people like me who have a 9 to 5 job or a 9 to 9 job, I really don't have time apart from the weekends. And weekends it's always full. So I've literally started servicing it outside the service center. So service may be a little issue, but it could be subjective from place to place. I live in Thane. Yeah, there is an issue over here. You live in Goa. You mentioned there, there are issues over there. Maybe in other parts of India, the service may be a little better. But at least for me, a negative point from Suzuki is the service. It's just that they don't have the infrastructure. It's not like they are not good in servicing. They just don't have the infrastructure. Uh, so, so let's hope Suzuki ups it up because they're getting some good bikes. So yeah, I don't they, need the bikes to, they need to. Even the... Yeah, word of mouth matters in bikes as well. Any product, word of mouth matters. Perfect. So Sherman, I think we should conclude uh, second and final first review regarding the bike. I think yes. our third video will be only post us uh, taking a test ride. Right. 